back in the water and ready for some hunting. I started the day hunting for some flatfish and pollock, but then I noticed a lot of bait fish in the shallows, which were being chased by both sea trout and sea bass, so I had to take a closer look. I am not allowed to shoot sea trout with my spear gun, but I am allowed to shoot sea bass. I see a lot of them, it's a whole shoal, but they keep splitting up. I'm only looking for one sea bass. If I get one of those, I'll be happy. I was so happy for this catch. This is the first time I have shot a sea bass with my spear gun. But I have caught some of them with my fishing rod back in time. Did a lot of catch and release, so most of the catches went back into the sea. But I have eaten sea bass once before. So I haven't forgotten how good they taste. Now I am looking forward to having this fish on the dinner plate. You probably recognize this one. My favorite species. Quite small, these two. Very exciting to find these two in shallow water. It clearly gives some expectations about what kind of species are found here. So I guess the larger individuals wander further out. Would love to meet one of them one day. The turbot. It is a very beautiful fish. Well, it's definitely nice in here in very shallow water. But now I want to start exploring a little further out in this bay. I need to fill up the freezer at home with fish. I actually wanted the slightly larger pollock that went under the big rock first. I see it, but it is not ideal. I hold the shot and find another fish. Here I see two Pollock swimming towards the kelp forest and decide to take a shot. Good hit on that one. Nothing is better than that. I see a lot of flatfish in this place. So many that I can actually pick and choose. Most of them are half buried in the sand. So I try to find the right ones and take them. The ones that are big enough. Although it is actually 20 centimeters. That is the minimum size for flounder. Pretty fast, these guys. Not difficult to understand why the flatfish are here. It's swirling with small fish and other smaller organisms everywhere down here. It's really fun when you see so much life in two days in the water. I don't often get days like this, so appreciate the times I get it. I get the feeling that I am in the right place at the right moment. I prefer a pollock that is from two kilos and upwards, although I occasionally shoot a smaller one. But I think it's an ideal weight. Sometimes the fish can look a little bigger than it actually is underwater. Not always. But that's why I hold back the shot sometimes. I'm just setting up a shot while considering whether or not to fire, in case the fish is bigger than first thought. And to practice aiming. Now that the fish is right in front of the arrow tip, always good with a little practice. The little fish you see on the right there, I think it's called Balan Ras in English. Not sure if that name is correct. In any case, it is called Bear Gilt in Norwegian. It has a lot of personality. Always fun to have them around. A very curious and territorial fish. They also very quickly get a bit angry with other small fish around them. I often see these fish using their tails to strike others with. Tough little fellow we have here. Maintains order in his neighborhood. One can only wonder what went through that flatfish's head now that he saw who suddenly appeared. Maybe he thought that, yep, and there comes Mr. Grumpy again. 
Just pure speculation, of course. But it is at least understandable if that were the case. Last shots for the day. The fish also has to be filleted, and I have to pack the fish in the cooling bag. It should ideally be done while the sun is still out, but this last sequence must also be included. Stay tuned to see how I usually treat all the fish after a trip. There were a few missed shots during these two days, and this one burned the most. I've smashed that arrow to pieces now, so thought this time it's going to go down in the sand. I followed it closely and aimed to the best of my ability and took the shot. The arrow goes into the sand. I managed that, but without fish on it. Too bad, because it was a nice size on it. But that's the game. Now the fish must be filleted and packed into the cooling bag. Just have to find a nice work area that is suitable for the job. Lots of good fish meat to be packed up. I had about the same amount of catch the day before. So this is my second time filleting fish from this place. In total, from both days, I have caught five pollocks, eight flounders, and one sea bass. There are many ways to treat a flounder at this stage. I alternate between cutting fillets or roasting the whole fish in the oven. Putting the whole fish in the oven is very easy, and perhaps the best way. I think the fish meat becomes even juicier with that method. But I really like fish soup. Very easy to prepare in the middle of everyday life. That's the idea here, and then I usually just cut the meat into small cubes. So it doesn't really matter to me what the meat looks like in that context. Some great summer fillets from this flounder. They are quite thick. This is gonna taste good. We are in July, and we are in the middle of summer here in Norway, about 24 degrees in the air, but a little colder in the water here on the western edge, about 16 degrees, actually quite a good temperature to dive in. I remove the skin from the fillets, so there is only the fish meat left. Then I put the meat in plastic bags, Pack it well, then everything goes into the cooler bag with enough cooling elements, so it stays cool for quite a while longer. Then I repeat the process with the rest of the fish. Everything is filleted, packed in bags. Then I clean up the work area when I'm done. Collects the remains in a pile so eventually the seagulls come and do the rest. They stand patiently on the side here, waiting for me until I finish the job. Here you have pictures from all the catches I got during these two days. Very grateful for so much good food that comes out of this. Now I have to go home to my house. I have a two hour drive ahead of me then complete the process with the fish. The catch from day one is already packed with the same process as you see here. So this is the catch from day two. I vacuum pack the fish and then put it in the freezer. This vacuum machine is a very good investment for those who want to start spearfishing. I always take it with me on my long distance hikes. It is important to dry the fish meat well before packing the meat into the bag. Lots of good food. Wondering what the next catch will be. Maybe it will be something like this. 